Welcome to Topic 5, Complex Zeros and the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra. This one lesson topic highlights the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra. We'll learn about the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra. We'll also learn about complex conjugates and irreducible factors over the reals. I'm Mr. Stark, and this is Polynomial and Rational Functions. Let's get complex! You may have noticed that I emphasized the fundamental theorem of algebra three times. Well, here it is. It says a polynomial function of degree n has n complex zeros, real and non-real. That means if we have a quadratic function, a polynomial with degree 2, then we should expect there to be two zeros. Multiplicity applies as well. For the quadratic function x squared, there's only one zero, which happens to be an x-intercept. But that zero has a multiplicity of two. You might also recall an example from 4b for a quintic function. The degree was five, and we saw three zeros on the graph. That means the other two zeros were imaginary. In fact, those two imaginary zeros made it impossible for us to find that third zero, which was irrational. Okay. Let's start with a basic example. Write f of x equals x minus 3i times x plus 3i in standard form. We'll just distribute these two factors using the FOIL method. The first term, x times x, is x squared. The outer terms, x times 3i, is 3ix. The inner terms, negative 3i times x, is negative 3ix. And the last terms, negative 3i times positive 3i is negative 9i squared. Remember, i is the imaginary unit, the square root of negative 1. Therefore, i squared is negative 1. Now we can simplify. The positive 3ix and the negative 3ix subtract out, and the i squared becomes negative 1. So we get x squared minus 9 times negative 1, which is x squared plus 9. The degree of this polynomial is 2, therefore there are two complex zeros. It just so happens that those two zeros are not real. They're imaginary. If we graph this function, we won't be able to see positive 3i or negative 3i on a coordinate system with real numbers. And that should make sense, because x squared plus 9 is the squaring function shifted up 9 units. Look! There are no x-intercepts. Now let's talk about complex conjugates. Let's say we have a complex number, a plus bi. a is the real part, bi is the imaginary part. Just like 3i and negative 3i in the last example, except a was 0. The conjugate of a plus bi is a minus bi. This shouldn't be completely foreign to you because by now you're familiar with the quadratic formula. The opposite of b plus or minus. The formula is set up to give us two solutions, and if those solutions are not real, then we'll have a complex number and its conjugate as the solutions. Let's try an example. Write a polynomial with minimum degree in standard form whose zeros include negative 3, 3 minus i, and 2 plus 5i. The first thing we need to do here is make sure we have all of the zeros. Since we have two complex numbers, their conjugates are solutions as well. The other two zeros are 3 plus i and 2 minus 5i. The next thing we'll do is write the function in factored form with all five of those zeros. Since x equals negative 3, one of the factors is x plus 3. That's the same as x minus negative 3, so the rest of the solutions will be written in that form. The next factor is x minus 3 plus i, then x minus 3 minus i, and the other two, x minus 2 plus 5i, x minus 2 minus 5i. That is the function in factored form, but our goal is to write it in standard form, so we need to multiply everything together. 
Warning, we're about to do a lot of algebra, but I'll share a few tips that'll help us do that along the way. The best approach is to multiply the factors that are conjugates of each other first. Let's start with three plus i and three minus i. I like to set up a Punnett square to multiply these two factors together. It looks like this. We'll simply multiply the terms together. x times x is x squared. For the top right, we have negative three times x plus, negative times negative, i x. For the bottom left, we have negative three x minus i x. For the bottom right, the negatives multiply to a positive. Then we have a difference of two squares. Three times three is nine. Negative i times i is negative i squared. The product of those two binomials with the binomial inside is the sum of all the terms inside the box. The outer and inner terms add up to negative six x. And since i squared is negative one, nine minus negative one is 10. So, we can rewrite f of x as x plus three times x squared minus six x plus 10 times the product of the next binomial. And we'll set up that product using a Punnett square or rectangle as well. x times x is x squared. In the top right box, we have negative two x plus five i x. In the bottom left box, we have negative two x minus five i x. And for the bottom right box, the negatives multiply to a positive. Then we're left with a difference in two squares, four minus 25 i squared. Since i squared is negative one, we have four plus 25, which is 29. Also notice that five i x minus five i x is zero. The product of these two binomials with binomials within is the sum of all the terms inside. And that's x squared minus four x plus 29. Yikes, Whew. that was tedious, but the hard part is over. We still have more algebra to do though. The next best thing is to multiply the two trinomials together. I'm setting up a three by three Punnett square for that. For the top left box, we have x squared times x squared, which is x to the fourth. For the bottom right box, we have 10 times 29, which is 290. And here's the rest of the boxes. Look, there's a diagonal pattern with the terms. That'll make adding up the terms easier. Oh, and just to be clear, the product of these two trinomials is the sum of all of the terms inside this Punnett square. Therefore, f of x can be written as x plus three, times x to the fourth minus 10x cubed plus 63x squared minus 214x plus 290. Let's take a breather and last step. We can distribute x plus three to the rest of these terms by setting up a box like this. For the top left box, we have x times x to the fourth, which is x to the fifth. Then negative 10 x to the fourth, 63 x cubed. Notice that the degrees of these terms are getting smaller and the rest of the terms. Then we have three x to the fourth, negative 30 x cubed, and so on until 870. The product of those two polynomials is the sum of all of the terms. Finally, f of x can be written as x to the fifth, minus seven x to the fourth plus 33 x cubed minus 25 x squared minus 352 x plus 870. We started with five zeros and we ended with a quintic polynomial. We'll end this lesson with an example that highlights irreducible factors over the reals. When a factor has real coefficients, but no real zeros, we call that factor an irreducible factor. We can't reduce it down to a product of linear factors only. Linear factors, meaning factors with terms that are only being raised to the first power. Okay, let's do the last example. Write f of x as a product of linear and irreducible factors. 
Let's find the possible zeros first. The factors of nine, plus or minus one, three, and nine, divided by the factors of three, positive and negative, one and three. We're not gonna use the calculator at all on this question. I'm choosing three for synthetic division because I noticed that there are multiples of three in the polynomial. So I put three in the box, draw a horizontal line, and drop down the first coefficient. Here we go. Multiply to get nine, add to get 10. Multiply to get 30, and so on. Yes, the remainder is zero. So x minus three is a factor of the function. Hmm, what should we try next? Well, I see that there are more multiples of three, but there are also these tens. So I'll try negative one next. Drop down the three, multiply by negative one, negative three, add to get seven, and so on. And the remainder is not zero, so negative one is not a zero of the function. Let's try negative three then. Negative three goes in the box, draw a horizontal line, drop down the first coefficient, multiply to get negative nine, add to one, multiply to negative three, and so on. The remainder is zero. Great, it works. Negative three is a zero, and x plus three is a factor of the polynomial. We just need to find one more zero because we know that one of the factors is an irreducible quadratic factor. Five total zeros, two in the quadratic, so we have three that we need to find. And since the numbers in our last division are all small and positive, three, one, three, one, then I'm thinking that our last zero has to be negative to offset the positives. So let's put negative one third in the box. Three times negative one third is negative one, add to get zero, multiply to get zero, add to get three, multiply to get negative one, and the remainder is zero. That last factor can be written as three x squared plus three. Look, the coefficients are real, but this expression doesn't have any real zeros. Subtracting three and dividing by three results in having to take the square root of a negative number, which is not real. Thus, f of x could be written as x minus three times x plus three times x plus one third times three x squared plus three. We have three linear factors and one irreducible quadratic factor. That was lesson five of the Polynomial and Rational Functions Unit. I'm Mr. Stark. Join me for the next lesson, lesson 6a. Did you press that subscribe button yet? Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. If you have a question, you might as well ask it. Do you have a comment? Feel free to add it. Hey, thanks for watching.